had a walk. Oh, had a trap. Oh, what's that guy? Fort Laramie, starring John Daner as Captain Lee Quince. Tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Pass the word to dismount and unsaddle. All right, Captain. I'm going up on that little knoll. Maybe I can see Mr. Seibert's party from there. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. This mountain unsaddle, been grazed water. This mountain unsaddle, been grazed water. All right. You unfit that mount before you graze him this time. Sure, Sergeant. I was just going. Well, you do it, then. This mountain unsaddle, been grazed water. We could make camp here, boat right there at water. Yeah. We could go hunting and fishing, too. Maybe bake some bread. <laughs> if you don't like the Army, why didn't you stay in Louisville? I was starving there, too. But at least in Louisville, I never had no Indians after my scalp. You afraid of Indians, boat right? Sure. But I'm going to get me one. i got to get me an Indian. Why? Then I won't be scared no more. Well, at least you're not in the stockade. <laughs> and that's just because Captain Quince needs me. These troops supposed to have 83 privates full strength. I swear we're down to 60. Yeah, he needs me worse than I need him. What's the matter, Boatwright? Oh, nothing, Captain. Everything's fine. I like it out here. You better like it. Oh, sure beats sitting around in stockade, sir. Last time you were in the stockade, did you just sit around? Well, no. No, but at least I didn't ride no horse out after Indians with an understrength troop. You'll never make a garrison soldier, Boatwright. Oh, I like the Army, sir. Captain Quince? What did you find, Mr. Seibertz? We rode over there, sir, where the smoke was. It was a homestead, Captain. Sue. Sue? Well, that's hey. enough, Boatwright. Yes, sir. Did they leave anybody there, Mr. Seibertz? The man's still alive, sir. Corporal Mercer's with him. But the woman and the little girl, they're dead. I see. What does the man say? Nothing, sir. He's got no tongue. Take charge of the troop, Mr. Seibertz. Sergeant Gorse and I'll ride over there. Yes, sir. And, Captain, take a look at this. Where'd you pick it up? Sue. The only Indian the man killed before they got him. Mr. Seibertz, that's a Henry rifle. Latest model. If the Indians have gotten their hands on guns like that, let's move out, Sergeant. How is he, Corporal? Is he bad, sir? They burned him some, too, but he's still conscious. There is a slow way to die. hundred miles to Fort Laramie, Captain. He'll never live that long. Sergeant, give me your revolver. You and Corporal Mercer start back. I'll catch up with you. Yes, sir. Pull out, Mercer. Think we'll go after them Sioux Gorse? I'm a first sergeant, not a captain. Well, I know, but you and Quince run this troop. He's Captain Quince to you. Sure. And he runs his troop. Sure. Who 
Joe? No. Everything all right, Captain? Everything's all right, Sergeant. Hey, what's that? Shut up and keep riding, Corporal. Well, what are you so hard? Shut Nobody... up, I said. Sure. Sergeant. Sir? When we get back, fall in a burial party. Yes, sir. See that those graves are cairned. Yes, sir. One other thing, Sergeant. Don't forget your revolver. That homesteader doesn't need it anymore. Captain Quince reporting, sir. Captain, I know you're mad because I ordered you back from chasing those Sioux last week. You didn't see what they did to that homestead family, Major. I've seen their work before, Quince. There'll be more of it if we don't stop them. Ten miles from this post, there's a reservation of 4,000 Sioux. An uprising there would be far more serious than your little band that's marauding under Yellowknife. You have enough troops to patrol the reservation, Major, and still secure Fort Laramie here. Give me just half of B Troop, and I'll run down Yellowknife and his renegades. My orders are to keep a constant watch on the reservation and to secure Fort Laramie with all remaining troops. Yellowknife is being supplied with rifles. Henry 44s. I know. Those are repeating rifles, Major. I've reported this to Washington, Captain. Whoever's smuggling those rifles has got to be stopped. Or every brave on the reservation will join Yellowknife. In spite of your patrols. I've received no change of orders, Captain. We can't afford to wait, sir. Give me Sergeant Gorse and three men, and I'll at least find that gunrunner. I'll leave tonight, Major. You will not leave. Is that a direct order? It is. Am I interrupting, Uncle Ned? Oh, come in, my dear, come in. My niece, Captain, Miss Terry Lawson. This is Captain Quince, Terry. How do you do, Captain? Ma'am... Miss Lawson arrived while you were away, Captain. She's going to keep house for me if she doesn't change her mind about army life. Are you coming to the dance tonight, Captain Quinn? Dance? Haven't you heard? I decided to hold a dance tonight, Captain, for such officers as are available and for a few civilians from Laramie. It'll show the Sioux we aren't as frightened as they might think we are. I see. You're coming, Captain? Do you think Washington can spare me for a dance, Major? Washington? Inactivity is a hard burden for the captain, Terry. Oh. But uh, I'd suggest the captain be at the dance tonight. Good day, miss. Major... Quince reporting his order, Major. <laughs> you uh, make it difficult, Captain. You remember my niece, Miss Lawson. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Captain. But it's Miss, not ma'am, if you please. Sorry, Miss. I wanted everyone possible to be here, Captain, for the sake of morale, you know. Yes, sir. A lot of the townspeople are here. Oh, there's Lieutenant Mapleton. Uh, would you escort Miss Lawson, Captain? Excuse me. Oh, uh, Mapleton. My arm. Thank you, Captain. You weren't in the war with Uncle Ned, were you? No. I started out as a scout for General McClellan just before Lee ran him away from Richmond. And you became an officer afterwards? I was commissioned in the field, Miss Lawson. President Lincoln was mighty short of officers by 65. They needed officers, and I made a good one. Captain, Uncle Ned says you know more about the Sioux than anyone at Fort Laramie. Do you think the rest of the reservation will make trouble? I don't know, miss. I haven't been out there. You mean you could tell just by going out there? Wild Dog's an old friend of mine. Who's Wild Dog? He's a chief. He's about 80, but he's pretty smart. Captain Quince, if those Sioux did rise, would they attack the fort here? It's hard to say. If there's 4,000 of them and only 400 of us. 
Shall we go back? Oh, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir? Until I return in the morning, you'll act in command of B Troop. I'm taking Sergeant Gorse with me. Any questions? No, sir. And escort Miss Lawson back to the Major. You'll excuse me, Miss... You're going to see Wild Dog, aren't you? Yes. Isn't it pretty dangerous, Captain? Two of you walking right in among all those Sioux? We'll try to reach Wild Dog first. But, Captain... Good night, Miss Lawson. <laughs> You are listening to Fort Laramie, starring John Daner as Captain Lee Quince. Drop your gun belt across your saddle, Sergeant. Mean that, Captain? A revolver wouldn't do you much good if these Sioux decide they want us. We're safer unarmed. All right, sir. Let's move out. Wished I had at least a bowie knife. It's late. Most of them are asleep. Four thousand Sioux in this campaign all asleep. No. We're being watched, all right. Yeah. Some young buck could get himself his first coup feather by spearing us. You wouldn't want to stand in the way of a man becoming a brave, would you, Sergeant? Captain, we're being stopped. I see him. Keep walking. Only one brave we can handle him. Leave him to me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. The only wild dog, nya. Is the Ahi. He has a value. He has a. Let's move, Sergeant. We'll keep an eye on him. Still just standing there, sir. I told him I'm a friend of wild dogs. Luckily, he's from the same clan. What clan is that, Captain? White Fox. There it is. Huh? See that medicine pole over there? With the white skin on it? That's Wild Dog's Lodge. Wait out here, Sergeant. Oh, yo, Leo, see ya. I used to. Come in, my son. Sit down. It's been a long time since we've talked, Wild Dog. A long time. And you come now because of Yellow Knife. Yellow Knife is leading your young men into war with my people. Sioux always been warriors. It is good to die in battle. Sioux now have white man's rifles that shoot many times. And you know about the rifles? I know. Soon every brave on reservation will know, and they will leave. Guard of soldiers make no difference. It'll lead to war, wild dog. Big war. There are many clans among the Sioux. I am chief only of White Fox. What clan is Yellowknife? Yellowknife is of two moon clan. But there are White Fox braves with him? Yeah. I cannot stop them. I remember what it was like when I was young. It was different when you were young, Wild Dog. You had a chance then, but now they have no chance. They have many rifles. They have a few, Wild Dog. But the white man, the cavalry, has thousands of rifles. In the end, the Sioux cannot win. He must live in peace or he will be wiped out. 
You're a wise man. You know this is true. Yes. You are right. Yellowknife and his braves will be caught and punished. Some of them will die. But if I don't stop his supply of rifles, many more of your people will die. You want to know where rifles come from? Tell me where Yellowknife meets the white man who's supplying them. I'll do the rest. You'll be saving lives, wild dog. Sue lives. For the sake of my people, I, I tell you. Place north of here. Place you call Bright Canyon. Bright Canyon. When it's over, I'll come back and we'll smoke the pipe. Mm. If you come back. If I come back. Captain Quince reporting, sir. I hear you left the post last night, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, you never were much of a garrison soldier, were you? No, sir. You saw your friend Wild Dog, I suppose? Yes, sir. Well, Captain, I have new orders from Washington this morning. Yes, sir. As you know, I reported the matter of Yellowknife being supplied with Henry 44s. You mean I can run him down, Major? No. My orders to patrol the reservation and to secure Fort Laramie still stand. We are not to go after Yellowknife. But the importance of the Henry Rifles is recognized, and we're to put a stop to it. Yes, sir. Can you do it? I can. All right, take half of B Troop only. You may have Sergeant Gorse and Lieutenant Syberts and two corporals of your own choosing. Right, sir. Pass the head of your column through the main gates of the post one half hour before Reveille tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. And remember, Captain Quince, your orders are to stop that gun smuggler not to run down Yellowknife. And if you get into trouble, there'll be no reinforcement. Are there any questions? No, sir. Then move out. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Ride out here with me and take a look at these tracks. Well, one shot pony. The rest of them is mules, Captain. And they're not engines, are they? No, sir. And they're headed straight for the rim of that canyon ahead. Bright canyon, Captain. Wild dog wasn't lying. Take five men and ride out ahead of Corporal Mercer's point. Make a reconnaissance of the north rim. If it's clear, send a runner back. Yes, sir. Tell the point to swing north and to dismount in the cover of those trees below the crest. Right, sir. Move out. Yeah. Mr. Cybert! Yes, Captain. I think we've found our man, Mr. Syberts. He'll be in that canyon up ahead. Sergeant Gorse is scouting the north rim of the canyon. If it's clear, we'll hide in those trees just below it. Then we'll wait. Wait for what, sir? We'll catch him in the act, Mr. Syberts, when Yellowknife comes for his rifles. Captain, you said Major Honeyman's orders are to get the gun smuggler and leave Yellowknife alone. If you do it this way, there'll be a fight. We're in the field, Mr. Syberts. I'll be responsible for my orders. Yes, sir. Not my fault if Yellowknife gets in the way when we move in on that gun smuggler. No, sir. Syberts passed the word to space out and stagger the odd files to the left. We're raising too much dust. Doing over here, Vickers. 
Go on back to your post. Oh, there's nothing happening down there in the valley. He's some gun smuggler. Just sits around in his cabin. What's the matter with Captain Quince, anyway? Half a troop against one man, and we hide around watching him for two days. You can't figure nothing, Vickers. We're waiting for Yellowknife. Them Sue? You mean we're going to fight them? As soon as they show up. You scared, Boatwright? All I need is to kill me an Indian. Then I won't be scared no more. Yeah, me too. I think. Who's throwing that rock? It's Gorson, the captain. Well, get on down there. He's signaling to you. Oh, I'll catch it now. Oh. You're going away from your post, Vickers. I, I couldn't see nothing where I was. I was wondering if Boatwright could, Sergeant. You can be shot for leaving your post at a time like this, Vickers. Yes, sir, Captain. You're risking the life of every man in this troop. Get back to where you belong. Yes, sir, Captain. Boatwright wants us. Come on. The end of the canyon, sir. Look, there they come. Yelling that. How many braves you figure he's got with him, Gorse? Hard to say yet, sir. Maybe 30. They got a bunch of horses, too. That's to pay for the rifles. Captain, I can see more than 30 Sioux down there. They must be nigh out of 40. There. There's that dirty gun runner now. Out talking with Yellowknife. I wish we had the whole of B troop here, sir. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Take boat right and move about 300 yards west of here. When you're ready, I want you to ride straight down into the canyon. Why? Shut up, boat right. Your orders are to find out if they're really trading for guns down oh, there. Oh, but, Captain, you... If you run into any trouble, I'll have to help you out of it. That's all. I understand, sir. Come on, boat right. Let's move out. Well, if all Please the crazy... Shut up, like I told you. Tell Mr. Seibert's there. I want to see him. Right, sir. Wanted me, Captain. Mr. Seibertz, I think those Sioux down there are trading for Henry rifles. Sergeant Gorse and Boatwright are going to ride down and find out. You mean they're going alone, sir? They are. There'd sure be a fight if we appeared in force. Might even look like I was trying to run Yellowknife down. But they'll be killed, sir. Well, I can't let that happen. If they're attacked, we'll just have to ride in. It'll be a rescue mission, Mr. Seibertz. I understand, Captain. Get back to the troop and pass the word to saddle and mount. Space out to 60 paces between mounts. It'll make us look full strength. Move out. Troops ready, Captain. Just in time. There go Gorse and boat right. They'll be seen any minute, sir. Yeah. Let's get back. Get mounted, Mr. Cyrus. Yes, sir. Him up there. I've never seen him, Captain. Then he must be in the cabin here. I'm going in after him. I'll go with you, sir. Oh, no, you stay with the troop. They've chased them far enough. Get those stolen horses rounded up. Right, sir. Here.
You're all through, mister. Come out of there. No. You ain't gonna hang me. Come out with your hands up and you'll get a trial. Hanging's bad. I ain't gonna hang. It's your choice, mister. Come out or I'll kill you right there. I'll take my chances. Suits me. Captain, but we killed some of them. What about Yellow Knight? He's dead. Right over there, sir. Private Boatwright killed him. Is that Boatwright flying over there, too, Mr. Syberts? I'm afraid so, sir. He took a bullet after he got Yellow Knight. Sergeant Gorse has some men rounding up the horses, Mr. Syberts. Reform the rest of the troop and take care of the wounded. Pick out six men for a burial party. Yes, sir. Corporal Mercer! All ahead! Hello, Boatwright. Captain, sir? What can I do for you? Nothing, Captain. I'm all shut up. There's nothing anybody can do. That was Yellow Knife you killed, Boatwright. I always wanted to get me here, you, Captain. But I sure never figured it'd be yelling, eh? Right? You did fine, both right. Here. Here's something I took off yelling, right? You keep it for me. You know what it is. Yeah, sure do. I feel all wet. Inside, yeah. I'm sorry, Boatwright. It's all right. I ain't scared. Of course not. Tell them all goodbye for me, yeah. All of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just finished going over your report, Captain. Yes, sir. And I'm not sure on reading it whether you deliberately disobeyed orders or not. Would you care to clarify that point? Major Honeyman, did you ever see one of these? That's a scalp. Private Boatwright took it off Yellowknife, Major. It's a woman's scalp. Young woman. Uh, get, get rid of it. Yes. Captain Quince, I'm reporting to Washington that the gun smuggler has been destroyed, but that you were attacked by Yellowknife during the operation and were forced to defend yourself. Thank you, Major. That's all, Captain. Oh, uh, uh Captain. Yes, sir? Miss Lawson wanted me to ask if you'd uh, care to have supper with us. My compliments to Miss Lawson, sir. I'll be there. Uh, one more thing. In regard to your recommendation for a posthumous medal for a private boat ride... Yes, sir? Uh, Washington might question a report that recommended an honor for one of the soldiers who actually brought on Yellow Knife's attack. For the good of the troop, I'd suggest... That's all right, Major. Boat ride would understand. He was a real soldier. A line soldier. Thank you, Captain. Yes, sir.
Fort Laramie was written by John Meston with music by Rex Corey and was produced by Norman MacDonald. Join us next week for another drama of the early frontier and of the brave men who fought under Captain Lee Quince, United States Cavalry. Thank <laughs> you.